Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm so happy you're joining me again today for another Casual Friday episode. This is most likely not being posted on a Friday, but let's just go with it. I am going to do some fun heat embossing techniques today and I'm starting with this gorgeous background stamp by My Favorite Things. All those hearts are so lovely, I just had to have it. It was my favorite thing from their latest release. And I put that in the wrong side of my Misty, so where your paper is usually goes. I do this because it's easier to see where the stamp will stamp <laughs> because it's a rubber stamp. Um, you can't see through it like an acrylic stamp and or a phot photopolymer stamp. And I just put some um, double folded or folded over pieces of purple tape on the back of my watercolor cardstock. And that way I can adhere that to the door of my Misty. I get a really good impression this way, far better than I would if the stamp was on the actual door of the Misty. I don't know how that works, but it just works for me. So I kept doing it. I think I got this from a CZ Designs video, not sure. And I'm sprinkling on some white pearl embossing powder. So this isn't stark white and it has a pearlescent shine to it. It's really lovely. And I'm just going to heat set that and then I can do some fun emboss resist with that. This is my absolute favorite embossing technique. Um, it's so fun. It creates really stunning backgrounds, especially if you're going to use the watercolors that I used for this. Um, I am once again going to use the Magical Shakers by Lindy's Gang. These are indeed very magical. The effects you get with them are always stunning and always very different. And they also have a shine to them, so that's why I chose the pearlescent um, embossing powder, because that way my entire background will shine and shimmer. Now I tape that down to a just a wooden board because this won't warp under my heat tool um, while my cutting mat definitely will. I spritzed the paper liberally with water and then I added some of that shaker dust and I will also spray that with water and I just do everything over and over again. Heat set it in between, dab away some excess water in between where it where it is pooling. Uh, I will also use a brush just to move all the color around. I'm just playing around with it until I'm happy with it. Now the more water you add, the paler the outcome will be. So um, my background is quite pale, but I like it that way because I want my sentiment to stand out on it. Uh, I do add a little bit of this darker pinkish purple, but that's mostly to get the purple hues in there as well. This contains some blue too, so it's really fun. Th these shakers are so fun to play with. I can't recommend them enough. I really want to get more colors. Um, I have a rainbow of colors now, um, but I want all of them. <laughs> I have serious full set syndrome with this supply. It's a really fun supply to have in your stash. Now, once I'm happy with how that background turned out, I am stacking up some of these Lots of Love dies uh, or die cuts by Reverse Confetti. This is the Lots of Love layered confetti cuts die set. <laughs> and I die cut three layers because I thought I was going to do something else, <laughs> but I changed my mind. Um, let's not dwell on that. <laughs> I do that a lot. So I'm just going to explain what I ended up doing. So I'm ink blending one of these um, one of these stacked sentiments. Uh, I'm just adding some color to that. You can just cut it out of colored cardstock if you prefer. Uh, I just used picked raspberry distress oxide inks and then I'm adding some embossing powders over that. Uh, I am using a bunch of them. I think this one is hibiscus. Whoops. <laughs> it's hibiscus embossing powder. I also added um, velvet embossing powder. These are all by WOW, by the way. And then at the end, I did want to add sparkle to the entire sentiment. So I also added some clear sparkle to the very top and this won't add any color or shade or um, 
darkness <laughs> to this because I wanted um, an, how do you say it? I wanted an ombre sentiment, but then I also want the death sparkle everywhere. So I just added some clear sparkle embossing powder to the very top, just to add some glitter to it and some shine. And that's it. That's my sentiment done. And that's one of my favorite embossing techniques to do. I actually have another video coming up with it. Uh, I made a really lovely card, but I can't post it for a while still. Um, I really like how that turned out and that also uses some embossed sentiments like this. Now I die cut a smaller rectangle from that background, put it on top of a piece of cardboard and adhered that on my card base. And that just adds a lot of sturdy dimension. I glued the sentiment in place and then I'm adding some periwinkle Meraki sparkle gems to add more shine and shimmer. I really love these Meraki sparkle gems and especially these pink ones. They also shift to turquoise as well. They're so lovely. I love them. And that finishes up my card. Once those are glued down with some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, I use Nouveau Deluxe adhesive to adhere anything other than paper to paper. Um, because the Barely Art Precision Craft glue is not strong enough to adhere gems, in my opinion. I made a matching envelope just out of some patterned cardstock. I used my We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board to uh, fold that. This is just an A2 size envelope. And I'm reinforcing all the folds with my bone folder, all the score lines with my bone folder. And I'm gluing that together with the Barely Art Precision Craft glue. And that finishes up my project for today. Lots of love. Another Valentine's Day card. I've made a ton of these and I really, really like how this one turned out and it was so quick to do. I think this took me 30 minutes and that's because I embossed it five times probably, the sentiment, but it just turns out so beautiful. It also has those domed edges. That's why I love doing the embossing after the die cutting. You can also emboss a, pattern, uh, a panel of paper and die cut from that. It's a little less cumbersome, but you don't get those lovely domed edges to your embossing. And that's why I do the, this technique. So I rather go to through a little bit more trouble to get that than just die cut from a, an embossed piece of paper. I hope you like it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. You can also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And for now, I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.